Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Way to Wild podcast uh, with AJ Jump from Carl Hall. And I'm Mike from Highway 81 Revisited. And um, we've been having some really great guests since we launched this a few months ago. And uh, we're really happy to bring in uh, Will Beekman. Uh, Will is the, the head honcho in charge at the Mohegan Sun Arena in Wilkesbury. And uh, there's obviously a, obviously a lot to talk about with venues and things like that. Um, so Will, uh, you know, it's the largest indoor venue in, in our region, in that region. And um, it's been dark for a while now. And you just, uh, just announced you're going to be doing something a little different. Um, so I'm just going to let you tell us about that. Sure. First of all, let me just say, I've, I've been watching the episodes you guys have been doing, and I've been enjoying them. And you have had some great guests on. So I apologize for bringing that bar down a little bit. Uh, oh, get out of here, man. Come but uh, no, you know, it's, um, it, it's certainly been a tough time. You know, it, it, I feel funny saying it's been a tough time for venues, because it's really been a tough time for everyone, right? I mean, this has been such an unprecedented situation. But, you know, venues like ours were certainly among the first to close, and they're going to be among the last to open up. So, you know, we're doing our best to just try to stay relevant. Um, you know, we've watched 30 events fall off our calendar over the last three months. So, you know, this past week we were able to announce a new one um, and it's a little bit different, a little bit outside the box. I think it's kind of hard for some people to probably wrap their head around and I understand that, but it just felt really good to actually add an event for once to the calendar after just watching them fall off for the last three months. Sure. So uh, you're bringing in uh, the comedian, Jim Gaffigan. Yeah. And he's going to be performing in the parking lot. So Tell us a little bit about kind of the logistics of that. Um, first of all, you know, for the fans that will be attending, what, what's going to be expected of them? How are they, what should they expect? And then also maybe a little bit about you guys setting up the actual performance. Yeah, sure. I, I think the best way to describe it is to think of it as a drive-in, you know, movie, only your entertainment is, is live on stage. And I have had a few people ask me that, you know, is Jim Gaffigan going to be here in person? in or is he going to be performing on a screen but you know exclusively for this audience and 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 he'll be here you know we have a um we're lucky in that first of all he had an interest in doing it we're lucky that we have a big enough parking lot to try to pull it off and it helps that he's you know located in the new york city area so we were able to you know bring him down just a couple hour drive so he'll be here on july 18th 40 foot by 40 foot stage with a you know 20 foot trim and lights and multiple LED screens to help with the, the viewing. Um, and I, you know, I think it's going to be a good time. People can, you know, they can expect that, you know, right now and, and, and on day of show, we're going to have to do whatever we're told we can do as far as guidelines go. You know, we're going to, of course, listen to what the state and the county are telling us. Right now we're saying, you know, you need to remain in your vehicles for the performance. Unless you need to get out and use a restroom, you can do that. If you do that, we ask that you put on a mask. Um, but otherwise, try to stay in your vehicle to en to enjoy the show. Um, hopefully, between now and July 18th, maybe things loosen up a little bit. And if that's the case, we are prepared to allow people to get out of their vehicles, and they'll have a, a separate parking space, a vacant parking space, to the right of their vehicle that they can use, put out a lawn chair, and maybe just get out in the sun a little bit and enjoy the show that way. But you know, we're going to take that one step at a time and 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 kind of see you know, where we're at when when we come to show day. Yeah, so it sounds like if, if things do get relaxed a little, it'll almost be like people tailgating for a concert, but then when it starts, they don't have to go in. So, you know, yeah. there's actually yeah. a, a bonus there for some people. Yeah, exactly, and I think that's a great way to describe it. You know, right now it's more of a drive-in, um, and that may be what it is, and if so, that's great too. You know, yeah. it's, it's, it's getting people out of the house, it's getting, you know, an artist, you know, a chance to go out and perform, it's giving us a chance to, you know, to do what we do. So. Um, it could be more of a drive-in. It might be more of a tailgate, but we're going to kind of play that by ear. But either way, like I said, I think it's going to be a good time, and we're just happy to be doing something. Did you look at um, other venues that have tried uh, this? I know a couple have done, uh, you know, the drive-in thing across the country. Yeah, yeah. We, um, I think the first one that I took notice of anyway was the one in, in Texas at the, the new Texas Rangers Stadium. I think they're doing like a four-day um, festival of some sort. Um, now theirs is a little smaller in capacity, a little more manageable. It's about, I think they're, they're between 500 and 600 vehicles. Ours would be closer to a thousand vehicles. Um, but we looked at some of what they were doing that they put up a, a very helpful FAQ on their website 
So we kind of went through that to see what they were allowing, what they weren't allowing. And that was helpful for us. Um, we were also lucky that, um, you know, Jim Gaffney, at the same time he was negotiating a, a deal with us, was also talking with some friends of mine who run the Count Basie Theater in, in Red Bank, New Jersey. And they were looking to do something like this at Monmouth Racetrack, I believe it's called, um, not too far from their, from their theater. So um, they're doing pretty much the same thing that we're doing. So we were talking all along, trying to keep our messages the same, um, talking about, you know, what expenses look like and, you know, what ticket prices are going to look like and all that stuff. So um, we kind of helped each other out, I think, in terms of coming up with the logistics and, and, and what it's going to look like. Uh, AJ, I, you know, you're an interesting guy to have here, too, because you, you play all kind of gigs as a drummer. And you're also, you know, AJ runs the venue Carl Hall, for those that don't know, a, an all ages venue in, in Wilkes-Barre. And um, how have you ever played a gig, anything like this, when you hear Will talking about people driving in and it's like a drive-in or anything? You've played some, you know, different festivals and things, but does this compare to anything you've played? No, I mean, it's funny. A couple of weeks ago, uh, one of the groups that I'm in, uh, Mule Team, got asked to play a wedding like this at the Garden Drive-In. Um, that was now past two weeks ago that that wedding happened but it was just there was too much uncertainty and and we all felt that way but in theory it sounded like a good idea but that was still you know but i think if we got asked now to do it say a month from now we would have said yes um because there are things like this happening a la like the event that um will just announced with the arena i i think that they are very positive things um Again, I've never played one, you know, um, or ever attended one. I think I think it's just going to be great, like Will said, to get people back out there, and you know, also to, you know, these things have to happen in order for them to be the litmus test for further things like this to go on. Um, sometimes it does stink to be the guinea pig, right? Well, <laughs> but we'll find but out. you know, someone. Someone has to do it in order for things to move forward. So, and, and I, I think, you know, we, we wish you all the best of luck with, with this event, Will, 100%. Will, what's the last um, actual, of, you know, live event? It's weird to even specify it that way, but the, the last actual live event with humans in the audience that the arena had, and when was it? You know, that's a really good question. It's funny that it feels in some ways like it was two weeks ago, in some ways it feels like it was two years ago. You know, so... Um, it was, it was probably, um, uh, not probably, it, it was a Wilkes-Barre Scranton Penguins game. As, as you guys know, um, we're also the home of, um, the Wilkes-Barre Scranton Penguins. So they had a hockey game. It was, and I don't know the exact date, but it was within the first 10 days of March. Um, and then we were gearing up for what was going to be an Aaron Lewis concert, um, here in the arena. And the day before that concert was the day that really everything started to fall apart. You know, that was when you started to see locally. I remember standing up. First of all, I stood up and took notice when South by Southwest canceled, right? A couple of days or a week or two before that. Then locally, you started seeing things like, like big deals around here, like the Scranton uh, St. Patrick's Day Parade, you know, cancel and things like that. Um, that's when we started to stand up and take notice that, you know, something was going on here. And then I, I believe it was Live Nation that, um, was the first one to really say, listen, we're just postponing or putting, pressing pause on all of our events, which, you know, was obviously a big deal. So it was about 10 minutes after that, that we got the call that you know, Aaron Lewis wasn't going to happen. And it's just been sitting around since then trying to figure out, you know, when can we do something again? And if, you know, when we do, what is it going to look like? So I, I feel like, you know, we have an option to sit back and do nothing until there's, you know, maybe a, a vaccine and we can somehow get back to what life was like, hopefully before, you know, March 12th or whatever it was, or we can try to in the middle, try to be creative and try to do some different things. You know, maybe it's doing parking lot concerts. Maybe it's coming up with a scaling in, in our building where we do our 8,000 or 10,000 seat configuration, but we only have 3000 people in there so that they can remain socially distant, you know, and right. then, you know, we're hearing talks of artists who will are willing to do that and come in and play two shows so that they can play the 3,000 and then another 3,000 later that evening um, so that everyone can kind of remain distant. So 
everyone's just trying to figure it out as they go along and, um, you know, trying to be creative. I think one of the silver linings for me has been watching promoters, agents, and artists and venues all kind of working together to be, you know, to become creative, you know, um, full transparency. It's not, it's not possible for Jim Gaffigan to make the money he makes in arenas doing it in the parking lot, not, not even close. Um, and for us, if it sells well, we're not going to make nearly the amount of money that we would make if it was in the arena as well. We're not going to be selling alcohol. We're not going to be selling, you know, um, you know, merchandise to my knowledge, you know, unless, unless, you know, like I said, things loosen up a little bit. So, um, it's nice that, you know, we were able to kind of come together and, and work on a deal that made sense for everyone. So, yeah. So, well, uh, oh, go ahead, AJ. Well, what do you think, um, what, what's one thing right now that you think, uh, this whole scenario is going to change the concert business when things get back to normal? Yeah. I, I hope those changes are going to be, temporary you know like i hope we can eventually get back to where we were um prior to this but i think at least temporarily when things return i and it sounds like a bit of a cop out to what is a really good question aj but i think it's going to be everything and i think everything from arrival to departure and everything in between is going to be different you know Ticketmaster's talking about you know selling tickets that come with an arrival time yeah i heard that you know, you got to show up at this time so that you know, everyone's not coming in at once. Um, how do we sell food and beverage? You know, do we let people order from their seats and deliver it? Do we let them order from their seats, but we prepackage it and have it as a, at a place for them to pick up somewhere? You know, if we get to a point where we can have in the middle where we can have maybe 3,000 people in an 8,000 seat arena, that may work in your seats. But what happens when it's an intermission and 1,000 people get up to go use the restroom, you know? So I feel like everything needs to be looked at. And um, I think all of those things are being looked at. It's just it's hard because I feel like everyone has ideas. And no one has answers right now, you know, um, but we're working on it. You know, our company, the company I work for, ASM Global, has come out with an initiative called Venue Shield, which is basically going to be our Bible that we're going to use for reopening, you know, what it's going to look like. How can we do it in a safe and, 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 and clean matter uh, or manner, I should say. So, um, you know, we're looking at it, but it's, it's, it's changed everything. I think. Do you, do you think that, you know, some of, uh, some of the prices in the industry are going to kind of, you know, drop a little bit to, to a, a, a more realistic level, like, like certain artists that do make a very large top dollar. Do you think that they're going to stand strong at that number? Or do you think that they will, eventually succumb to bring their numbers down yeah it'll be interesting to see i think again if, if we can somehow at some point maybe it's not you know not in 2020 maybe it's sometime in spring of 21 maybe it's even later than that i think if we can at some point again get back to how things were before this whole thing hit then i think you're going to see everything go back to normal including ticket prices and artist fees etc but I do think in the interim, everyone's looking to be creative, like I said. And if, for example, we were to do something where we bring you know, an artist in who maybe an artist who's playing larger theaters right now, playing 2,500 seats, 3,000 seats, and we put them in an arena, that deal has to look different than it would look in a theater because the overhead is totally different. You know, exactly. it's a lot cheaper to go in and play the Kirby Center in downtown Wilkes-Barre than it is to come in here and, and play. That's just, you know, simply the fact of the matter given the size of the venue, you know? So I, I think there's, there's going to have to be some adjustments to the deals to, to make it work in the interim. Uh, oh, Will, you were working on uh, rescheduling the tool date. You know, there, it was one of the most highly anticipated shows coming to the area. Yeah. And uh, I think you're, you know, telling me it was sold out like almost immediately. Um, yeah. And when we spoke last year, we working on rescheduling with, with the band. And since then, like a lot of bands uh, or a lot of touring artists, they've announced that the tour is canceled. So yeah. um, where does that stand? Are they are they working on rescheduling for next year? And if so, is the arena in those discussions? Yes. From what I'm told, they are. I think, you know, normally you have either like a show is postponed or a show is canceled. I feel like now there's almost like a third category somewhere in the middle where bands are canceling instead of postponing just because I don't think they know yet when, you know, they, they don't see the light at the end of the tunnel yet, you know, so it's hard to um, postpone and then 
you know, maybe you have to postpone it again. You know what I mean? So to their credit, and, and I know they said this in their press release, but they've said this to me as well. They just said, listen, we don't know exactly when we can reschedule. Let's call it a cancellation. People could use the money right now. Let's give the fans their money back. Um, and then we'll, we'll regroup and we'll reroute the tour and we'll put it back on sale again. What I can tell you is, you know, we were very lucky to have that show. Certainly we were probably the smallest venue on that tour, um, probably the smallest market on that tour. Um, so we realized how lucky we were. We got a call about an hour after it went on sale that we were the, we were the best selling venue on the entire tour. Wow. Uh, now that pretty much made us sold out and other venues still had seats to sell because they're much bigger than us. But we were the, we were the fastest selling venue at one hour into that, you know, that tour going on sale. So I mean, per capita, you might have less seats than those venues. In, in absolutely. A way, you know? Right. Yep. Fair enough. Fair enough. So or more, I'm sorry, more. It, ta- it I, takes I, more no, to no, sell no. out the arena in Wilkes-Barre than to sell out. You know, I saw them in Newark, which is in the heart of heavy population. Sure. Yeah. Well, it's funny because that, that kind of the Mike and I talked to Brett about this sort of like new rock um, sort of metal slash breaking Benjamin connection with this area. And it just, those type of acts do so well here because yeah. that, that music feels like home to this area for certain people. So that, I mean, that's the proof in the pudding right there on the major, major side of things. I mean, there right. you go. It also helps, you know, Tool just put out you know, what I think is maybe their best album, you know, 20 some years into their career. So they're not out there just uh, Papa Roaching it and singing like they're constipated, right. you know, like, you know, I mean, it's, right. you know. And yeah. we had, um, you know, for what it's worth, we had a shot at that when, when that album came out and they, they went out on their first leg of that tour, we had a yeah. shot date there and they reached out to us. And unfortunately, we had a, we had a Penguin hockey game the night that they needed. So we couldn't make it work, which was, you know, a, quite the bummer for us but then when they reached out to us again a little later on another leg you know, it tells me that they have an interest in the market it's been a while since they've been here um there aren't too many slam dunks in this business aj you know that um but that's about as close as you get we knew that was going to sell and we knew it was going to sell quickly and i think we're lucky that we at least got on sale with it and we were able to kind of prove our or show our strength in terms of market so um when they do regroup and they do you know come up with new dates we are told that we will be in the mix and i i feel very comfortable saying that we will get good. Another. Uh, good. another one, you know, that I think our uh, viewers would be interested in was the Bob Dylan show. Yeah, um, yeah. What is there any update on that? Yeah, same thing. Quite honestly, um, we, we were told it's going to be canceled um, for now, and then they're going to regroup and they're going to, you know, they just don't know when. But I was told on that one as well that you know we'll get, um, you know, we'll get a good shot at it. I I know, you know, they said that that you know. Dylan is is pretty selective in terms of the markets he's he's willing to play. He's played our market before. He played the Kirby Center a couple of times. I know he's played here at the arena a few times. Um, so we made that, you know, we made that cut for whatever reason. So I, I like our chances of making that cut again. And um, you know, it, it that one's a bummer because that went on sale after, like right after everything started to fall apart. You know, so I think there were people who were un you know, they were a little hesitant to buy tickets because they just didn't know what was going on in the world. Sure. Um, but despite that, we got out of the gate, you know, really well and it was selling well. And then he started dropping, you know, a surprise single at midnight and another surprise single at midnight and then an album. I really think the show would have done very, very well. It's just, you know, unfortunately things beyond our control have derailed it. But I feel really comfortable saying we'll get that one again too at some point. That's great. Yeah, definitely great. Oh boy. <laughs> you know, it's funny because the last one that we did too, I, I you know, it, we talked a little bit about how it, it's starting to get a little bit annoying talking about this stuff in a way, but you have to talk about it, you know, and especially in this case, you, you know, it, it lends itself to that because you just announced a show that completely changes all the rules of doing a show because of all this. So it, it needs to be talked about. It, need, it needs to be, light needs to be shed. And, and this is a, a new world we're living in now, hands down. Yeah. You know? I mean, we're, we're, you know, I'm sure you've said it to your kids already, Will. They, you know, they'll never forget this. This is, hopefully this never happens again in our lifetime because they're going to prepare for it. But none of us will ever forget this. I mean, it's just, it's, it's surreal. It's, 
it's still hard to wrap your head around, you know, what's going on to see something that just literally, no, not literally, but figuratively put its arms around really the entire world and just brought everything to a screeching halt, you know? Um, and like I said, it's, I, I feel bad sometimes complaining about losing 30 events because there are 110,000 people who've lost their lives, you know? Um, and it's just, it's, it's, it's kind of mind boggling, but um, you know, we're trying to get through it. I think, you know, in a funny way, the, the, the music fan and the musicians are, are pretty versatile and, and, and are, um, you know, pretty resilient. So I think we're going to come through this on the other end. Eventually it's just a matter of matter of when it's, 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 it's tough timing, you know, touring, especially nowadays, and you guys know this, our artists used to go out to tour in support of a record, trying to sell as many albums as they can. And they still go out to support those records, but they're really going on tour to, to make a living because they're not making that money on, on album sales anymore. You know, that's why you're seeing every show has a VIP ticket now and all this other stuff. I mean, that's where the artists are making their money. So, um, you know, with, 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 with no tours, it's, 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 it's a tough time for everyone. Well, how long have you been at the arena now? It was, it was a year about last week. So just, just over a year now. Okay. It. So, uh, so for people that don't know, Will, um, was the executive director at the Kirby center in Wilkes-Barre, uh, Kirby center seats 1800. Is that? 1832. Is that right? to be 1832. Exact. Sorry to those 32 people. Uh, <laughs> I'm sure they're all very good fans. You usually kill I was maybe one of them. Uh, I think a night <laughs> ranger. I was number thir 1831. I was way up. Uh, it was a good seat though. Um, so you were at, just trying to trace kind of your career arc a little bit while we have you. Sure. Um, you're at the Kirby for how many years total? It was just under 10 years. So that's, that's a long time. So to yeah. shift from an 1800 city, 1832 seat room to yeah. the arena, which holds what for a concert? Like, yeah, it, it depends, but we can get to about 10,000 with a GA. Okay. So that's about five times the size. Now you're staying in the same market, which helps. You're not picking up, uprooting, learning yeah. a new, you know, uh, new market but what has the transition been like uh just dealing with the scale you know just a larger uh just seems like there's a lot more moving parts like you yeah, alluded to when a band comes to town it's more going on at a large arena yeah uh, to be honest i i was humbled a little bit by it i i left the kirby center kind of feeling good and flying high i think we had a really good run there we did a lot of good things and um I, I like to think when I left and it was a total team effort, but I like to think when I left, it was in a much better place than it was when I, you know, when I, when I got there um, and I was feeling good and I felt, you know, coming over here, obviously a much bigger room, but it's kind of the same job, right? I'm still working with all the same agents. I'm still working with all the same promoters and it's going to be a pretty seamless transition. And it wasn't, I'll be honest, you know, it, it took some getting used to, um, you know, I, I don't necessarily know why that was, but I felt like I was spinning my wheels a little bit for the first couple of months. And then, um, you know, like anything else, I, I started to kind of gain my traction. And then all of a sudden I felt like we were, we were doing some good things. We started announcing some good shows. We had a nice run there with, you know, we had WWE had announced Monday night raw and they were about to announce a SmackDown event. We had, you know, we had gone on sale with the Alice Cooper and um, who was it? Alice Cooper and Tesla tour. And then, you know, right into Bob Dylan and, and Tool, and we, we were rolling. And then, unfortunately, right as we started to kind of, you know, hit our stride is when we had to come to a halt. But it yeah. took me a little bit of time. But I, I tell you right now, I feel a lot better in you know, June of 2020 than I did in June of 2019. Oh, that's good. Uh, yeah. So, Will, one thing I, I always respected about the way you handled things at the Kirby is um, – you know, you had your old standbys like the Beach Boys that would come every year and, and the doo-wop stuff that you knew was going to sell. Probably didn't take much of a marketing effort. Yeah. It was slam dunk, like you kind of said mm -hmm. earlier. But then you would also take some risks. And maybe you'd put the band in the lobby for the lobby series or you'd get them on maybe a bit of a deal between markets. They never played there before. And if you sold 500 tickets, everyone would be relatively happy. Can you take risks at a place as big as the arena when you're talking about 10,000 seats? Yeah, I mean, we can. Uh, I think it's important to point out that, you know, the company that I work for, the business or the programming model, probably a, a better way to describe it, is, is certainly different. Um, you know, it's, it's, it's more corporate here, not for better, not for worse. Um, but it is. At the Kirby Center, I was always very thankful. We had a board of directors that was very supportive. 
Um, you know, they knew the business side of business. They didn't necessarily understand the performing arts world or the concert industry. And they were, um, they were kind enough and I think smart enough to say to us as a staff, you guys know what you're doing. You know, come to us if you need us and we'll help you. But otherwise, we're going to stay out of your way and let you do what you do. And um, they kind of let us do what we wanted to do at the Kirby Center. And we made some smart decisions and we got creative and we did good things. So, you know, I, I certainly bring a lot of that here to the arena, but it's also a little bit different. I have a corporate office that I need to answer to. Um, at the Kirby Center, we took full risk on 95% of the shows that we did. We were negotiating with the agents, we were paying the artists, and we were sinking or swimming on ticket sales. And luckily, we were able to swim a lot more you know, than we, than we didn't. So um, again, I bring that here, uh, and, I, and I hope to, to do some of that here, and I feel like I am. But I do have, you know, I have approvals that I need to get before I can take that risk. And the overall business model here is not so much, let's take full risk. This has historically been more of a rental facility, you know, where promoters come in, and they bring the acts in and they assume the risk, you know. Um, we've changed a little bit, you know, over the last couple of years where now we're doing more co-promoting, where we're partnering with the promoters and sharing some of that risk. But it's pretty rare for us to take full risk on an event here, which is what we're doing for Gaffigan. So, um, you know, we kind of stepped outside of a comfort zone there as well. And I appreciate our corporate office giving us, you know, enough rope to, to swing. You know, I, I think we're going to have a have a good night that night and I appreciate the opportunity to do it. So yeah, it, it, it's a little bit different in terms of the programming model, but um, you know, I, I feel a lot more comfortable now. Now, I mean, this Mike keeps taking the exact questions that I'm going to ask. He's firing them right at you. We're, we're in the same headspace here. Um, kind of uh, more specifically within that question, how has it been dealing, you know, obviously 10,000 seats to almost 2000 seats, it, and you, you use the word corporate. Um, obviously, there's more money involved, um, which means there's larger entities that are run more corporately involved. Um, how has it been? I mean, you're seeing, I remember you saying once, like the first week you were there, the difference between the, the alcohol sales were like, oh my God, I can't even believe that. But yeah, I mean, that's just a figure. But I mean, dealing with... Um, what I'm talking about is dealing with those other major, you know, uh, money corporate entities like the WWE or things like that, that you did not deal with at the Kirby Center. How is that? What, are the, what have been the challenges with that? Yeah, you know, I haven't had too many, I'll be honest with you. And I, I think, and one of the reasons I was pretty comfortable taking the, or making the move from the Kirby Center here to the arena is there's a lot of staff here that has been here for a long time, that has been here from the start, you know, we have an assistant GM who's been here from the beginning, you know, Steve, who you guys both know, Steve Prambar, our director of sales and marketing, has been here for over 15 years. You know, Kevin Jovich, who runs our entire box office operation and does all the booking with me, been here for 15 years. So, you know, they've been here kind of laying that groundwork for me, whether they realized it or not, um, building these relationships. So they have a great relationship with WWE. They have a great relationship with the live nations of the world. And now, our company is, you know, SMG merged with AEG, the second largest, you know, promoter in the world. And so, you know, we, uh, we have these relationships that were in place before I got here. And that has certainly helped me just kind of step in and, and kind of hit the ground running in that regard. But it is, it, you know, it's, it's noticeable, certainly, the you know, the differences and the dollar amounts, but it's also, you know, it's, you know, proportionate as well, if, you, if that makes any sense. You know what I mean? Sure. We, you know, the artists are making a lot more money in arenas than they are in, in theaters, but there's a lot more seats to sell as well. So you know, right. the deals look kind of kind of the same, um, just for some... More zeros added on everybody's end. Exactly. The, the cost, right, right. The, everything. Well, right. um, when you start at the Kirby, and I've been thinking about this a little bit, when you started at the Kirby, the, it wasn't that long ago, but the market, the, the live music market in Northeastern PA has changed since then. So at mm -hmm. that point, um, the Grant Cultural Center had a pretty regular schedule um, with yeah. Stan Levenstone doing shows, AEG doing shows. I remember there was a week or so or a month where they had Wilco and Megadeth and Ray Davies. And I was up there like excited, yeah. like, wow, this is some sort of, this is happening. And then yeah. it pretty much stopped. Uh, in the summer, Montage, uh, Toyota Pavilion at Montage. Now I think it's just the Pavilion at Montage. Right. It's like a 20,000 person venue. 
I don't know if there's a market the size of Northeast PA that Northeastern PA that has something that big. And that was, you know, every year, Dave Matthews band, Tom Petty, yeah. Peach Festival. Now, again, cultural center, it seems like they're not doing uh, national touring acts anymore. Uh, Montage seems like they're doing mostly country and two or three festivals. How has that affected, you know, the whole market? Because they say a rising tide lifts all boats. Well, that's, that's a, not a rising tide. That's, so how does that impact the way the whole market uh, operates? Yeah, and, and that's certainly a theory that I subscribe to, you know, the whole rising tide lifts all boats, you know. So, um, and, I, and I mean it when I say that, you know, when, when Live Nation, you know, gets, brings a big act up to, you know, the montage, when I was at the Kirby Center, it was always an act we didn't, we couldn't get anyway. You know what I mean? But it was good for the market. If a show, if Live Nation brings a show to, you know, montage that sells well, you know, that gives them a little more confidence in the market. Maybe they're more likely to bring a, a different act than to the Kirby Center, you know? Um, and I certainly realize that. So I, I think that stuff, you know, I think that stuff's important. But, um, you know, now here at the arena, it's, it's a little different because if they, you know, if, if we see a, a country act going out on tour in the summer and we have the capacity for it, you know, we know we're probably not going to get it because it's going to, it's going to probably play outdoors, you know, at the, um, at the pavilion. But again, that act goes to the pavilion and does well. And then another country act's coming out that fall when you can't go outside anymore and it did well, then, you know, the promoter's likely to bring it here to us. So, um, you know, I think that kind of stuff's important. We keep an eye on it. Certainly. I think it, it, it brings some challenges when you're trying to book acts because there are so many things you need to look at to make sure you're not stepping on any toes. You know, um, you know, I remember once we booked, it was Travis Tripp at the, at the Kirby center and we went on sale and the pre-sale did really well. And I would say after the first day of the public sale, we were about 50% sold out you know, feeling really good. The next day live nation announced and I forget who it was, but it was a country act playing montage and it was on the exact same day. Ugh. As Travis and we like our sales just came to a screeching halt. So there's only so much you can do sometimes, you know. But I think it's a good thing that there's so many things going on around here. You know that we have to be careful before we book a show. Okay, well, let's see what's going on about Montage. Let's see what's going on at the Kirby Center. Let's see what's going on, you know, over at the casino, or or is there a baseball game that night at the ballpark, or whatever. You know, there's a lot to do around here, and I think that makes it a great place to kind of live and work and play. But um, you know, I, I think. And I've told AJ this, uh, you know, so many times, he's probably tired of hearing it, but to me, this business, like most, is all about relationships, you know, and, and yeah. we have great relationships with promoters and agents. And, um, you know, it's, it, it's a small world that we work in, but at the same time, it's, it's, it's a world that keeps going. So, you know, when we see, you know, maybe we, we, we try to get a show with an agent and Tool, for example, right? We had that, we had that date, there was a hockey game, you know? And I was so bummed about it. And it felt like a blink of an eye a couple months later, they're coming back with the next leg and, 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 and we have a date. So, you know, we cheer everyone on and, and we try to continue building those relationships. And, you know, it's tough. You know, there's, a, there's an arena now in Allentown yeah, that does a lot of business. You know, you have Hershey, which does a lot of business. They're slightly bigger than us, which is nice. You know, when a promoter has his hands on or her hands on an artist that is just selling every seat in every venue, they're going to go to the one that has more seats, you know? So that presents challenges for us as well, you know? But like I said, we do our best to, to kind of cheer everyone on and to keep building those relationships, thinking that there's a lot of, you know, there, there's enough promoters and there's enough shows out there that we're all going to get some, you know? Yeah. Well, you're such a, a positive guy that I feel bad asking a lot of these questions that are, are making you uh, delve into some <laughs> negative things. So I, I wanted to ask you kind of a, a happy one. And like putting all the business aside, putting all the um, – logistics, routing, money, approval from, from the higher ups. If you could reopen the arena with a big show, um, what would the bill be? Uh, What's your dream bill? John Prine fan, would be yeah. on it. John Prine would be on it if I could if I can dream, right? And I can I I could bring anyone that I wanted. That was um that that was a tough one uh to lose, you know. Um you no, know, I, I want to bring Tool back for you, Mike, for sure. Um, <laughs> on a weekend, though. If it's for me, it has to be on a weekend. <laughs> Let them know. Tell, tell them Maynard. Back. Yeah, tell, tell them Maynard. Schedule. Tell yeah, them. tell Maynard. I can't come because it's not on a weekend. 
Yeah, I'll keep that's that actually. I mean, we're going to let everyone know that's the re real reason the show was canceled. But sorry <laughs> to all the Tool fans. All right, keep going. <laughs> um, you know, on the theater side, I was always it, it was always um, for me. You know, I, people would ask me that question. I would say Tom Waits. You know, I've always wanted to have oh either see Tom Waits, present Tom Waits, book Tom Waits, whatever. Just be in the same room as Tom Waits. That's certainly a bucket list one for me. So um, if you're giving me you know the ability to bring in anyone I want, I would do that for sure. Um, would love to be able to see John Prine one more time, you know, more of the arena size, you know, um, I saw, and I, it, it took me a while. I, I didn't see Tom Petty up at Montage. And then I think he played like Wells Fargo, maybe his last tour. And I was going to go to that and I did it. And it's kept being like, I'll catch him next time. I'll catch him next time. And then he passes away and I never had a chance to see him. And I'm always going to kick myself for that. So last summer, um, I had a chance to go see the Rolling Stones in Philadelphia and I hadn't seen them yet. So you know, tickets were not cheap. Um, I was able to pay face value, luckily, but they're still, you know, it was like a mortgage payment. Um, and I had a chance to go and, and I didn't want to miss that opportunity. So I went and, you know, I, I knew it would be good. I was excited about it. My wife and I went um, and I said to her, you know, this, this is a one and done thing. I've always wanted to see him. Let's just see him. And I'll, I'll never ask to, to do anything again, or I'll never ask to go see them again. And I was just blown away by the yeah. show. And I'm, I'm a guy who'd rather see a show in a small club or in a theater. I'm not a huge, like, I'm definitely not a stadium guy, you know? But I was just blown away by the production and by the show itself and, and just the musicianship. And I, I told my wife, I, I, I lie. When they come again, I'm, I'm, I'm going to go, you know? Yeah, it's good. I mean, I did the same. Um, they came to Giant Stadium. And I was lucky in, on the same tour, and I was lucky enough to get a face value ticket. And it was a pretty high seat and everything, but uh, so you know, it's like a bucket list just to say you did it. Yeah. I mean, I've always loved the music, but I didn't know. I knew it would be good. I knew I wouldn't be bored. And yeah. they came out, and the first couple chords that Keith Richards hit were so loud that I started laughing with my friend Brian. I said, "This is." I, I was. I all I could do was laugh, not laughing at it, but I was like, yeah. "I can't believe how good this is." And, yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, when it was done, I said that was worth every penny. Like they, there's certain bands that they charge a lot, and then when the like even Kiss, AJ and I saw it montage. I'm not the biggest Kiss fan. I said every penny spent. Like they have tons of trucks and fire. I wasn't bored for one second. Different right. type of band in the Stones, obviously, but some of these large scale things could actually be really, really yeah. good. You know. Um, but, uh, yeah. Yeah. No, I was just gonna say. So I, you know, I always loved the band, and then and I knew they'd be good, but I was blown away. So. Um, yeah. That's definitely one that's, you know, even though I checked it off my bucket list, I'm, I'm putting it back on. Yeah. Uh, AJ, anything else for Will before uh, we let him get back to work? Uh, I mean, I was just going to quick say Mike and I got to see Petty at Forest Hills Tennis Stadium. And that was probably the smallest show on that tour. And it, it, we, <laughs> we get our first beer, we get up there. Then we see the beer guy after we finish our first beer, so we get a second one. Well, after two beers, you got you to gotta go to the bathroom. Right. We couldn't because we, we were starting to get mad that he wouldn't play a bad song so we could go to the bathroom. Yeah. And we couldn't because he yeah. didn't play a bad song. And the yeah. show was so amazing. Yeah. You know, that was honestly that Mike and I that year. And then we saw Roger Waters a couple months after oh, that. God. And it was like two shows within three months that completely blew our heads off. Like best in a total shows. different way, too. Yeah. Yeah, and best shows in my lifetime I've ever seen, and both of them were with literally like within 60 days of each other. And it yeah. was just, yeah. And again, those are buckleless shows. I came home, I remember from that Roger Waters show, I told Aaron Fink and I told my, my uncle, who's a huge Pink Floyd fan, I'm like, I don't care what you have to do, but I'm telling you right now, go see that show. Both of them did. Aaron Fink went by himself to like Buffalo or something just to see yeah. the show. And he was yeah. like, that was totally worth it. You know, so you got to go. You just have to go because you never know, you know. Yeah. You got to do it. And, there, aren't and too many, there aren't too many bad songs in any of those artists that you just mentioned. That's for sure. That's for sure. I um, Right before I took the job here at the arena, I was here to see John Fogarty and you know, I've always been a Creedence fan. I was, was always a Fogarty fan, but it was never like high bucket list type of thing. But he was in town, so I went to, went to see it. And I was just, I mean, you forget sometimes with artists like that. It was two hours straight of like 
soon as the first chord hits, you know the song. And it's like, I forgot he wrote that one too. You know, it was just two hours of hit after hit after hit and just so impressive. And I remember hearing it was actually during, and I feel like this happens so often, it was, but it was during those most recent um, wildfires in, in California. And he found out before the show that his home was literally burning down um, and went out and just put on a killer show. And, um, you know, I, I'll always be kind of impressed by that, but that's what I love about what, you know, what I do. And, and, you know, I've, I've always wanted to be a musician. I've always wanted to be you, AJ. Um, and I don't have the ability or the skills. Um, so this is kind of my way to kind of be in this industry. And I feel really lucky to, to, to do what I do. I mean, Will, without, without embarrassing you, you know, because I know you're a pretty humble guy, but, you know, on behalf of AJ and, and myself, and I would say, you know, music fans in the area, um, just like to thank you for like kind of being on our side as music Absolutely. fans. Um, I know there's things you alluded to that you have to do. You're in a business. It's not just, oh, let's throw a party and put my best friends bands on the bill. But you've been, I feel you've, you've been an advocate for the, the music fan and, and taking some of the risks, which we talked about. So you know, I'm really glad it's someone like you that's been able to do that at the Kirby and at the arena. I think it's really benefited uh, the area a lot. 100%, man. And let's, all, let's also remember to, you know, anybody watching too, that music always brings people together, no matter what. It doesn't matter. It, it, you know, it brings people together in a positive light. You don't know, like, people could have the worst week ever and they're just so excited that they're going to that show. It, it could change their entire everything. And, you know, uh, Mike has been around and, and a positive force in this business, writing about it. You've been a positive force in this business, you know, putting on these shows. And, and let's remember that, that that's something that's going to help push all this negativity out. And right now it, it is hard because we don't have that right now. I mean, and, and just the little speck of of anything like that, like this Jim Gaffigan show, could really make a big difference. And we just need to push forward, I think. And, 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 and thank, exactly, thank you for, for doing these things and bringing them to this, this market, this smaller area. Well, I, yeah. I appreciate that. You guys both know, I think, a lot of, of the two of you and, and the jobs that you do. And um, so, you know, hearing words like that are always nice, but especially coming from, from you guys, it, it, it means a lot. I, I'll just say that I, truly come to work every day as a fan just as much as I do an employee. Like I, I really love what I do. And, you know, the night before announcing a new show, I, I can't sleep. I'm like a kid on Christmas Eve. Um, you know, when tickets go on sale, I'm, I'm excited to sit there and just, I just obsess over the numbers and just kind of refresh my screen, you know, seeing how sales are doing. I love when, you know, and a lot of people don't realize when you book a show, it, it, sometimes it's a long process. It's a year or more before you know, you, when you first start negotiating with an agent to the show actually taking place, a lot of work goes into that. And, and I always do my best, as busy as it is on the night of a show, I always do my best to be in the crowd when the lights dim and the artist comes out on the stage and you hear that first chord or you, um, you, know, you first see that spotlight and, and, and the artist walks out and the crowd kind of you know, goes crazy. That's, to me, that's what it's all about. And that's my favorite moment you know, of a concert. So um, I'm a fan, like I said, as much as I am an employee here, and I'm, I, I feel lucky to do what I do, and I appreciate people like you, so thanks for having me. All right, well, thanks a lot, Will. This was great. Yeah. Uh, wish you all the best, and I uh, really appreciate you taking the time to talk to us today. Keep Absolutely. doing what you're doing, guys. I really appreciate it. Thanks so you much. You too. Thank you. Yes, Bye. Yeah. Be well. You too.